the New York Times, in their Business Day section, Andrew Pollack wrote a piece uh, called Sales of Sovaldi, a uh, New Gilead Hepatitis C Drug Soar to $10.3 billion, which seems to be a story about a new Hep C drug. But in the second paragraph, they note that the autoimmune disease drug Humira is believed to be the world's top-selling pharmaceutical. Now, Humira, what Humira does is it suppresses the immune system. It slows down the accelerator of the immune system. And I've shared this with you before, that there's this theory, it's called the hygiene hypothesis, you can look it up, that if we keep ourselves too clean, we produce autoimmune diseases. Because our, our immune system is normally running a little, a little faster than it should. Because it's, you know, it's designed to deal with that. Well, actually, the reason why it's running too faster than it should is that from the time humans broke off from other primates 165,000 years ago and became our own unique species of Homo sapiens sapiens, until about 100 years ago, we all had worms in our guts as well as hundreds of different kinds of bacteria. And I talked a couple days ago about how gut bacteria seems to not just affect health, and not just affect the quality of your, of your uh, stool, shall we say, but also affects mood, affects cognition, affects clarity of thought. I mean, there's all, and, 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 and affects weight. I mean, there's all these things that seem to be affected by gut bacteria. And people, you know, increasingly people are supplementing the, themselves with uh, gut bacteria supplements and finding physical and mental benefits. But that doesn't get to this issue of a hyperactive immune system. The worms that we all had, and I remember as a little kid having uh, pinworms when I was like seven or eight. They just ran around our school. The pinworms, you transmit them just by touching another person. They give you uh, uh, itchy butt syndrome. They, they, they come out at night, right? They're little tiny things. I mean, they're so small that they're almost microscopic. They're no big deal. They don't represent any threat to anybody. But everybody in my school had them, I had them, my brothers had them, and we all had to take these pills for a couple of weeks to kill off the, the pinworms. It looks like pinworms, hookworms, and, and uh, there's a kind of roundworm. They're called whipworms, that's it. That there's, th these three worms have varieties that are specific to humans that apparently co-evolved with us, and on the surface of these worms, on the body of the worms which live inside us, they produce a chemical that downregulates our immune system so we don't expel them, so we can live with them. And we have lived with them literally as primates for millions of years. All primates have these worms. And it, say it takes your immune system down 10 or 20 percent. Well, you get rid of the worms, which we did when we went to flush toilets. Right? Good sanitation gets rid of the worms. So people typically don't have worms anymore. In fact, even the pinworms that I had as a kid, they just pretty much, you know, parents these days don't even know about this. They don't worry about it. And it turns out there was nothing to worry about in the first place. But here's this really interesting story in Science Daily. And, 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 the, and the, the, the leading pharmaceutical now that's being sold is one that suppresses the immune system the same way the worms did. Okay, this is from Duke University. This was published last week. Here's a, a, a summary of the study. Gut worms can protect babies' brains from inflammation and long-term learning and memory problems caused by newborn infections. And I'm not talking about worm infections. I'm talking about newborns getting sick. And I'm wondering if even getting a vaccine qualifies as getting sick because it produces an immune response. And without the worms in the baby's body, the immune system overreacts. Okay, gut worms can protect babies' brains from inflammation and long-term learning and memory problems caused by newborn infections. A new study on rats has shown expectant mother rats with tapeworms even passed the protective benefits to their worm-free pups, the researchers found. The findings could point new ways to, to prevent or treat the chronic brain inflammation linked to cognitive disorders like Alzheimer's disease, autism, and depression. Could it be that the explosion of autism that we're getting and the worm that they were using, they were using tapeworms around worms, and, uh, you know, it, it goes on. So could it be? Could it be? Do we need to go figure out how to get ourselves some worms? <laughs>